All right, guys, we've got a bunch of stuff to go over in this video. We have two 2024 A2 tracks to check out, and we have, we're going retro. We're going throwback with the 50th anniversary YZ uh, setup for Cooper Webb. We've got the Ken Roxon setup here, pretty freaking awesome. And then we have the Jet Lawrence um, Elsinore inspired kit gear. Really, really cool. There's a bunch more. Um, but this is what I wanted to show you at the very beginning. Um, so a lot of stuff to go over. Let's just jump into it and check out the first track, 2024 Anaheim 2. All right, so to start things off, we have a bunch of stuff to show you, a bunch to go over. There's so much to talk about. Um, but yeah, let's start with Cooper Webb here and the first version of 2024 A2. So this rhythm section came out really, really good in the game I'm super happy with it um, just having that single into the corner before the whoops it was it just worked out best that way and I felt like that could be a realistic way the writers might take it then we have back-to-back -back whoop sections we have a bridge uh, for this track and then this section is really weird it's two small jumps like right in and out of the corner then we cut back down the start straight and this rhythm section was really really tough for me to make because i feel like they might quad over this table so i decided to make it that way and then triple out um came out really good and then we have a double the supercross triple and then the finish line into a medium size double and then kind of a wall or single before we cut back to the where the track connects back to the the start straight so the track is pretty interesting. They have changed the track in real life a decent amount from what the map says it will be. So there probably will be some changes, but overall uh, came out pretty good. So uh, really happy with it. After this lap, we will switch over to the second version of A2, um, which is a bit different. But I kind of want to talk about Cooper Webb. So Webb looked fantastic. He got second place, got a decent start, and just got faster as the night went on. But there was a bit of drama between him and Sexton. Uh, Sexton was getting lapped. He had a bad night. Uh, just went down, bad start, all that stuff. But he let AP by. But Webb, he did let Webb by too. But they they hit each other. And Webb was pretty unhappy. He gave him some hand gestures. He, he wasn't happy about it. But I watched it several times. I don't think it was intentional. Um, I feel like Webb feels like it was, but I actually don't think it was intentional. The lines came together, and um, it was a very one-line track because it was kind of muddy. Um, yeah, Sexton could have let off a bit coming out of the corner, but I don't think he thought it was going to, you know, Webb was going to run into him that way. So, uh, yeah, Sexton could have let off a bit, but it still feels very, very unintentional. I don't think there was any, you know, I, I don't believe he did it on purpose, so... Bit of drama there, but Webb got second. Here we have Tomac, and this is the difference here. I decided to make it a quad triple, but the problem with that, it's fun, but honestly, I'm not sure that's the way they'll take it because there is kind of a bend in that section, and it was really, really annoying to do. I really like making tracks where you can hit the same line most of the time. It might be a bit difficult or challenging, but it isn't annoying. And that rhythm section was incredibly annoying, so I did not validate this track. And then the other difference is this section here. Um, it's the same, but it is a bit more stretched out. So again, it was just really annoying to hit this every time, so I decided not to do it. And then we get a huge case on this triple because it works fine, but I was so used to hitting the, the other track that I just hit it weird. But it works, we just got to... A big case with um, Tomac, but the rest of the track is the same. And then I wanted to cut over to AP. He got his first 450 win. He got redemption from last year, throwing it away on the last lap right before it was about over. He even said he was wearing the same jersey from last year when he um, threw that race away. But he finally got the win. He looked really good, got a good start. Roxon actually had the lead, but in I would assume most of us thought he might win it, but he got a bit sideways off a small jump and dumped it over, and then he had to kickstart the bike. He got it started pretty early, but um, that was all it took for AP to get by and um, get the win. Now, 
it was close. I felt like Cooper Webb was kind of catching him at the end, but then he had a run-in with uh, Sexton. He sounded as if it was kind of weird trying to pass Tomac. Um, they talked about Tomac, you know, when he let Plessinger by, he kind of latched onto him and um, was riding really hard. And uh, Plessinger was saying how it was weird because it, it made him feel like Webb was the one behind him. But um, yeah, Tomac didn't have a great night. Um, just I know he came together with Craig. I, I'm not sure what happened. They didn't really show it on the broadcast. But yeah, uh, Eli Tomac didn't have a great night. But really, really happy for Plessinger. And that was the best part about the night. But it wasn't the main storyline. Unfortunately, we got Jet Lawrence here. Jet got basically, I believe, a last place start and came back to fourth place. So he had a pretty good ride. His heat race was would have been good. He, on the very first run through the whoops, he everybody else was taking it easy. But he decided to blitz him and he got the lead. And then I was thinking, if he keeps doing that, he's going to go down. I mean, it just he just has to go down. And he did. And so his heat race didn't go quite as good, but the main he rode quite well and got a fourth place. But at the end of the race, he wasn't happy with Jason Anderson. From what it sounds like, it, it sounds like Anderson was brake checking him, cross jumping, all that stuff. So he wasn't happy about that. But honestly, the brake checking probably was on purpose. I mean, he's trying to to stay ahead of him right he's trying to stay ahead but the cross jumping i just don't believe that was intentional it was a very one line track the rider said that one main line was okay but um the ruts got really gnarly and if you got outside of it it was pretty 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 bad so i don't feel like he was cross jumping him on purpose i mean that's a risk for both of you right i mean that could end poorly for everybody involved so i just don't think anderson was doing that on purpose but Jet wasn't happy after the race. He kind of waved him over, and then um, Anderson wasn't happy. He kind of put his hand in his face, but there were several angles that showed it. Jet grabbed his helmet um, when he was trying to ride away. It would have been best to just let him ride away. I know emotions get high, and you're heated. He's kind of a kid. I mean, he's a kid. He's 20, going to be 21. I mean, he's a kid, but he's not Julian Beaumaire, 17. But still, whatever, give him an excuse, he's 20, he was probably unhappy about it, but um, yeah, he should just let him right away. Anderson didn't like it, that he grabbed his um, helmet, obviously, so he grabs his helmet and yanks down on it super hard, like really hard, and um, that was kind of the storyline coming out of um, San Diego. It kind of distracted from AP's win, which is unfortunate, but um, yeah, that was pretty pretty insane actually and then Jason Anderson did get an apology kind of on social media but just a couple days ago we learned that that's all pretty fake he said that after the race a bunch of the Honda guys came over his dad Jet's dad came over were apologizing for him the social media guy said hey um, we're sorry I'll put out an apology for Jet it was all fake he said all the guys coming to apologize for him but the man himself right all he got was silence and an unfollow on social media so you know that post garnered a bunch of attention one of the best comments on that post was from ken roxon ken roxon just said ha 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 and then um somebody else commented back and said i wouldn't laugh too hard or whatever he let you buy talking about jet from the super motocross race and then roxon came back and said ha 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 shut your mouth it, it was so funny i couldn't stop laughing but a bunch of riders chimed in um you know there's definitely no love lost between jet and it seems like a decent amount of riders um forkner for for one i mean if you remember jet and i don't know if it was his fault he kind of clipped a tough block but jet cross jumped and then came together with forkner and he broke his collarbone and ended his season well he had a story about that you know a bunch of riders were commenting on it and it really surprised me i didn't i don't know and then anderson also said that jet's gonna be great but he will never be the king he will never be the king 71 to go so yeah he and anderson also did own up he said i can be a pain in the neck i can be a pain in the neck and he owned it it felt like it was a good post and it just it'll blow over but it makes it 
interesting going into A2. Anderson obviously isn't okay with it. The apology was fake. It just makes A2 quite interesting. We'll have to see what happens, how it develops, and, and whatnot. So much drama for Supercross and Motocross, right? We're dirt bikes, but uh, quite a bit of drama. So let me know in the comments what you guys think. How do you feel about it? Who do you side with? How do you feel about the race? We're happy for AP. Uh, but you guys and girls are absolutely amazing. Thank you so much for the support on the channel lately. It really does mean a lot. And until the next video, take it easy.